as an F-150 owner myself, I've been eyeing this mid-cycle refresh as a chance to upgrade my own truck, and it got me thinking about the things Ford could do that might light a fire under me to go out and buy a brand new truck. So in this video, I want to take a look at what we already know about the 24 F-150, the five things I hope to see from Ford's refresh, and the one thing I hope not to see. I'll also talk about what I think the F-150 does better than the competition. The mid-cycle refresh can be a great time to buy a new pickup. If you're brand loyal, it gives you options. Do you crave the latest and greatest, or do you want tried and true? After all, it's the only time where you can buy a brand new truck from a particular manufacturer and have multiple styling options to choose from. Well, unless you're buying Ram, who's still selling brand new 2018 half tons. But anyway, let's start with what we know about the 24 F-150 from spy shots and other various sources. Now, I don't own the rights to any of those spy shots, and there will likely be more as we get closer to launch, so I'm going to refrain from using them here. But obviously, there are going to be some changes to the front and rear styling, and that's standard fare. But one of the biggest changes we see in those shots is a new vertical infotainment screen similar to the 15 and a half inch screen available in the Lightning. There are some things to discuss here with that. Is this going to be reserved only for the highest trims or will it be available on say XLT and Lariat? Will they go bold and replace the 12 inch screen completely with this? And how does this impact the future of the shift lever? A console shift lever will definitely impede access to the big screen. So does Ford do away with the shift lever altogether? Do they only address this when the vertical screen is involved? That remains to be seen. So tell me, what would you think if Ford went to a shift dial or buttons for all F-150s? Let me know in the comments. At any rate, with the addition of a new type of screen, I would expect to see some, at least minor, styling changes to the interior. Okay, now that we've talked about some of the things that we know are changing for sure, I want to briefly touch on three areas where I believe the F-150 sets itself apart from the competition. Let's start with what I think really sets Ford apart, and that's the powertrains. Ford has really pushed the envelope with their development of different powertrains over the past decade plus, and they have a diverse portfolio of turbocharged offerings, naturally aspirated V6 and V8 engines, and of course, the Power Boost Hybrid. Couple this large group of engine options with Ford's available Pro Power on board, and you've got some versatility that no one else offers. And Ford has not been shy about surprising us with new engines, but I would be a little surprised to see an all new engine debut for 24, although I would expect to see some existing power numbers boosted for next year. So what else do I like about the F-150? Well, I live in the upper Midwest and that means salt on the roads in the winter. And with the way things rust up here, that Ford exclusive aluminum body sounds pretty good to me and it's not going anywhere. I'm also a fan of the trim packages that Ford offers. Aside from one massive option that Ford doesn't make available on lower trims, which we'll get to later, I like how Ford has staged their trim levels. I especially like that you can get a sport appearance package from the STX up to the Lariat. Let's get into the heart of the video and talk about the five things that I want to see in the 2024 F-150. And I'd love to hear what things you hope to see, so be sure to drop your list in the comments. At one point, the tailgate step was the only major tailgate innovation available in the full-size market, but I'm over it. Heck, I wasn't really ever on board anyway. I'd take some bumper steps like we see on the new Super Duty over the tailgate step. It only helps access the box with the tailgate open anyway. Now, it does feel like Ford, who led the initial charge of the tailgate wars, has fallen behind, so I want to see some cool new tailgate design that we haven't really seen yet. Now, there is an apparent patent for a mid-door tailgate, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will come to fruition. And while I'm a fan of a good old-fashioned tailgate that just functions properly, a lot of dealer stock gets ordered with the optional tailgate, and many of us get stuck with whatever tailgate upgrade is offered, whether we want it or not. So let's see what you've got, Ford. 
This is the big one for me. I mean, this is the main reason I have not upgraded my truck in 10 years. Ford, please, please give us the automatic transfer case below the Lariat trim. I've been able to buy a cloth Silverado with auto track since 1999. That was last century for those of you keeping track. When people ask, why don't you just use four wheel drive? Well, I'll tell you why. I don't need it all the time. Three months of the year, I need a little help with some intersections and don't want to be switching my transfer case back and forth all the time. Maybe I prefer cloth seats. Maybe I don't want to spend Lariat money. Whatever the case may be, I'm not buying another truck without it. So your move, Ford. With my big rant out of the way, the next thing I want to see is the expansion of the off-road packages. Let's talk about the Tremor. Now, I would love to see the Tremor package available with the six and a half foot bed. And I know they offer the new Rattler package, which is basically an appearance package for the XL paired with the FX4 package. But I would like to see something like a Tremor STX available, something with a factory lift that rivals Chevy's custom trim Trail Boss. This may be an unpopular opinion, but I'd like to see Google connectivity available. I know many of you don't want to shell out more money for another subscription, and I'm with you on that. And wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are more widely available now and function in a similar fashion, but I'm in favor of moving the industry toward a standardized navigation interface, and Google is arguably the best fit at the moment. The Google interface is so much better at search and routing than your average car company's factory navigation, and you likely already use it, so there are no new commands to learn when you change vehicles. I do think it would be smart for manufacturers to offer a subscription free of charge for a number of years after having dropped a heavy sum on one of their vehicles. Personally, I'd like to see the industry head in that direction, and hopefully access to these services Will eventually become a bit more streamlined in the future. Next I want to talk styling. I'm really hoping that Ford simplifies their grills and headlights next year. I'm not a fan of most of the grills and there are like four different headlight styles this year. Now as I'm recording this, a crew cab STX 4x4 comes in around $50,000 with rebates. I mean, at that point, can't they just build them all with the best headlights they've got? Personally, if I've got a budget and a list of options I'm targeting, I'm not going to move up or down a trim because the styling of a trim doesn't fit my taste. I'm just not going to buy or I'm going to look at something else. So go ahead and jazz up the top trims, but give us something simple and consistent through the bulk of the lineup. There's no need for like 10 different grills. Well, on to the big thing that I hope not to see in the 2024 F-150, but first, if you've enjoyed the video thus far, I hope you'll ride along with me in future videos, and you can call Shotgun by clicking that subscribe button. I would love to have you along for the ride. Okay, we've established that the F-150 is already pretty good. I proposed five ways I'd make it better. Now, the main thing that I hope not to see on the 24 F-150 is the new Super Duty styling. Having seen this truck in person, I have to say that I'm a bigger fan of the outgoing Super Duty styling, and I'm concerned about a shift in that direction only because the Super Duty and the Expedition's front ends are kind of similar in my mind, with the C-shaped running lights and a little bit of a rounded look, so perhaps Ford is moving their styling in that direction. I do like the overall styling of the F-150 in most configurations, However, like I mentioned earlier in the video, a little simplicity could go a long way. I expect to see the 24 F-150 available late 2023, and hopefully this summer we get all the details. But this just being a refresh, it really could drop at any time. Well, if you enjoyed this video, check out some of the other videos in my trucks playlist, and I encourage you to hit the thumbs up button on this video as well. In future videos, we'll talk auto news, reviews, and transportation related products. And of course, we'll continue to speculate and dream about what we hope to see in upcoming models. So hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you down the road.